Hello community, so great that you are back. Yes, we have new research by NVIDIA. Let's have a look. Welcome to my channel Discovery. Eye. We have a look at the latest paper. So whenever we try to distill a 72 billion parameter vision language model to a small 3B edge model, all our standard distillation methodology fails. Now, especially also with vision language models. So what we want, the idea is simple. We have a high teacher AI brain, if you want, and we want to extract here all the new insight and all the complexity and all the reasoning into a little student model. And the student should just extract the insight and not be big enough for the learning process. And you might ask why we fail. Now, the representation of the teacher here lie on a high dimensional manifold that a student vision language model constrained by limited parameters in the hidden dimension cannot simply map to. No? The student suffers from what we call a representational collapse, learning only a noisy average approximation of the teacher's logic than its clear precision with the higher model size. And NVIDIA here published here on December 30th, 2025, here brand new research masking the teacher and reinforcing student for the distill distilling a vision language model. So what they do is to say, okay, we have a new framework, we call it MASTERS, okay, stands for Masking Teacher and Reinforcing Student, which reimagines the distillation process through two coupled dynamical processes. At first, we have a curriculum pruning, and then we have an offline reinforcement learning. Both are methodologies you are familiar with, so it is just a combination of things that we already know. And NVIDIA tells us we are currently underutilizing here the capacity of these smaller AI models, of these smaller vision AI models, because simply our distillation techniques are inefficient. As simple as that. And here you have the result, and I show you this if you ask yourself, hey, should I read this paper? Look at this. Here we have the model size on the x-axis, and here we have the average performance increase. Now, with the dotted line here, you see here, whenever we go here with a 72 billion and classically we break it down into a 7B or we have imitation learning to a 3B or 2B model and you see the performance goes down. We are here at the bottom of the hour graph. But if we use this new methodology, you see in the solid lines, hey, look, we can bring this huge knowledge back almost here at the same average performance level, but now we operate with 2 billion, 3 billion, or 4 billion model size. So this has definitely here an improvement, but careful, just to remind you here, we had 64 percentage points, and we go up to, let's say, where's blue, to 76. So the jump is there. It is not that we really go to 100%, but it is the next step in increasing here the performance. And the idea is simple. Let me be clear. Everybody can do this. So this masters here artificially weakens now here the teacher intelligence at the beginning of the learning process by masking out non-dominant weight tensors so that the teacher effectively becomes a little bit more stupid, no? becomes a little bit simpler. And when the student who has no idea about the topic starts now the training, the teacher is now progressively becoming more and more intelligent, more and more unmasked, gradually, therefore, increasing the complexity of the representation. Now, you know, this is our standard curriculum learning, now done here in a very interesting way. Simultaneously, NVIDIA tells us the framework uses here our classical reinforcement learning, our GRPO, not to explore the new path, but to perform now a post hoc selection on, now hold on to your socks, on the pre-generated responses by the teacher AI, rewarding those that are both correct and transferable. And you see we are looking here probably for two different loss functions we have to combine in an intelligent way. So Masters here proves here that modifying the teacher capacity dynamically, start slow and become more and more intelligent, is just as important as the training data itself. It demonstrates here that an offline reinforcement learning with our classical GRPO on pre-generated samples here yield here state-of-the-art results with a fraction of the compute time. And if you have an NVIDIA GPU, you know, this is great if you only have two days compared to 30 plus days for the same result. So Masters allows us here a 3B up to an 8B model 
to really outperform significantly larger open source model where we have access here to the weight tensors like a 72B on particular benchmarks. So you see here in this image here by Nano Banana Pro, we have here this huge intelligence here of our huge vision language model. And we want to distill it down. We want to focus it and imprint here the logic to our little student chip of NVIDIA. So what is the framework? The framework is rather simple. It operates here on a unified objective combining now, hold on, the mask progressive distillation loss when the model becomes more and more intelligent and a dual reward offline reinforcement loss. So you understand, we are going to have a lot of fun now. So what is the teacher? What is the masking process here on the teacher? This masking process is magnitude based. Let me explain. So to align here the capacity, the teacher, let's call it T, with the weights W, T is pruned based on the magnitude here of the tensor. So a binary mask is generated using a particular threshold derived from a desired sparsity ratio. Now, careful, this masking is layer-wise to prevent here the collapse of specific layers entirely. We want to have here the complete intelligence of the teacher. We want every layer to be there because the learning process should really include every step, but we don't want that the model collapses because of complexity issues. So magnitude pruning seems to be here the brute force heuristic here of specification. It operates on the assumption that the parameters with value close to zero are, let's call it, semantically inert. So by removing now the small weights here, they effectively apply here a low pass filter on the teacher logic gradually with the time steps. So they force now the student to learn here if you want only the broad strokes, not the large weight tensors first. So the fact that the magnitude pruning is quite a blunt instrument is actually a feature here. No? It acts here as a brutal regularizer, preventing here the student from fixating on the teacher's minor nuances much too early in the learning process. Learn the nuances later. Learn the basic facts first. Of course, everything relies on an L1 norm assumption that if a weight scalar is large, it allows the signal to propagate strongly to the next layer, and if it is small, it kind of dampens the signal. No? So therefore, removing the small white minimizes here the change in the output activations. Now, I told you that this masking ratio is not static. It follows here a curriculum, what we know as curriculum learning. No? So at iteration i, the ratio r of i decays linearly, gradually restoring here the full teacher's capacity, the full semantic richness in the logic in the causal reasoning of our teacher AI machine. So this ensures that the student as our AI student machine first aligns with the coarse grained features before tackling here the fine grained high dimensional dependencies, the little details. And here you have it here. So you start with a masking ratio of 20%, then 15%, 10%, 5%, and then in the end here, beautiful. Now, notice that at each masking stage for the teacher AI, the student AI is updated using now two particular reward functions. We will have a accuracy reward, or accuracy, and a distillation reward, or distillation. And this progressive distillation enables here a smooth and stable knowledge transfer to the student. If we combine this, we can jump another 10 percentage point in the performance. So offline reinforcement learning with dual reward structure, and you immediately ask, OK, so you already know we don't go with cross entropy with, with GRPO, and this is the optimization objective that we have now to solve. You notice I don't have the Kuhlbeck Labor divergence, but I have the classical Jensen Shannon divergence because this is much more stable in this process. And if you say, what am I talking about? I have a particular video here on AI Matt explained the easy way you immediately understand what is all this mathematical notation. Now let's click a little bit closer to this dual reward function. The advantage of a GRPO is calculated with a total reward. We just have some additive terms. So our accuracy reward, simple, evaluated by an, yes, I'm so sorry, LLM as a judge. So we rely absolutely on the judgment of a hallucinating LLM. And you know that I'm not happy with this if you get a binary outcome and add a zero or one to ensure the semantic correctness. Okay. 
But then we have a distillation reward in addition. So this is the novel part, if you want. No? It measures here the ease of the transferability of knowledge from one AI machine to the other. And if the divergence between the teacher and student logic for specific response is low, the reward therefore is high. No? To stabilize this, the use of the reverse mean max normalization, I'll show you in a second. Here we are, beautiful. But let's have a look. So the masking ratio, as you see here, starts here, or let's hear for the particular um, 3.5, 14b, it started 40%, 35%. So you have a stepwise function going down. So you have to optimize this here, or we have here 38b, you see, and we have this green stepwise function. So the stepwise decay of the masking ratio. It is not smooth, it's a staircase function. This is simple, it's fast for NVIDIA. It allows the student AI to stabilize at certain complexity levels before the next more difficult level here is ramped up. So you have learning, saturation of learning, perfect. Next step. Now, if you look now at the performance trend and we combine now this, if you want, step-by-step -step learning. If we have here, let's say in green, the master's methodology with a large teacher only, you see that we would immediately more or less saturate here, plateauing here, at let's say 77 percentage points on the average performance. But if we have now this masters with a mid and a large teacher, so we go step by step, we have the classical curriculum AI training, you see we go up to 80%. Now you might say this is not a lot, 77 to 80%, but hey, we are fighting here with every single digit. So yes, absolutely, it is an improvement. And then if you take here the final look here, distillation with and without reinforcement learning, you see here from the naive and the mass progressive, without reinforcement learning is the blue one, 77%. And with this new methodology of reinforcement learning with multiple loss functions here, you can get up to 80%. I know in absolute terms, it just looks like three percentage points, but hey, we look for whatever helps us. So, the student AI is not forced to mimic here at the beginning already the full probability distribution of a 72 billion free trainable parameter AI model right from the start. This is great. It starts to learn a simplified distribution that grows in complexity and this helps here the student AI to have a better knowledge transfer functionality. But of course, while offline reinforcement learning at fast, it limits the exploration. Eh? The student AI cannot discover novel situation path that the teacher did not pre-generate. Because we have such a small student AI, it only here mimics here the reasoning traces. It cannot discover absolute new novel solution path. This is a massive limitation. So what is not, if you want, in the learned intelligent here after, if you want, teacher 72 billion vision language model, you cannot find it in the 3 billion model. And don't tell me anything about there will some emergence of intelligence and suddenly the system becomes intelligent. It is not going to happen. So NVIDIA is already thinking here, hybrid approach, offline warm-up and an online fine-tuning could push the performance further later in a video when they have this representation. So, very simple example. Now you have a question input. Hey, what type of vehicle is the dog sitting on in the image? And you have the mask teacher, and we have no multiple responses. No? And you see two are accurate here, semantically accurate, but also the mask teacher is hallucinating. No? So you have here, this is not an aircraft, this is a rudder, yeah, a motorcycle. So you have to t take care about this uh, filter out the hallucination. And then you have, in addition to here, the distillation. So you see, when the accuracy reward evaluates the binary correctness of each response, the distillation reward matches the ease of knowledge transfer based on the divergent objectives between the teacher and the student logits. Great. What a beautiful study. Really, the, on one of the last days of 2025, NVIDIA says, I have to make my intelligent vision language model smaller. How can I distill here the knowledge and the insight and the brilliance and the reasoning traces here from this huge model down to local vision language model that are real small, 2 billion, 3 billion models. Maybe you can put it on an iPhone. And you understand immediately what market segment we are talking about. Great. So 
Would I recommend you this paper? Absolutely. It's an insightful preprint for anyone trying to optimize here to small language model here or multimodal vision language model systems. Great. It has great a simple idea, a great idea. Provides a robust, scalable recipe for compressing here or extracting here the main reasoning traces of a in highly intelligent model of a huge vision language model into a little tiny 2 billion, 3 billion vision language model for edge devices. Highly recommend it. I like it. I hope you enjoyed it. Why not subscribe, become a member? Anyway, I see you in my next video.